الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله عليه من ربه أفضل الصلاة والتسليم أما بعد تبسيم just wanted to continue reading where I left off before the Salat al-Maghrib, taking more benefit from the words of Asa'adi rahimahullah ta'ala and taking advantage of the time that we have here, which is very limited and short, before my departure uh, early Sunday. <coughs> the Shaykh rahimahullah ta'ala, concerning the subject matter of the Qur'an, he says, وَمِنْ عُلُومَ Quran." After the subject matter of the monotheism of Allah and he's singling out Allah with his names, attributes, actions, and right to be worshipped. He said the second subject matter of the Quran, Sifatul Rusul wa Ahwaluhum, is the characteristics of the messengers and the circumstances of their lives. Wama Jara Lahum wa Alehim and what occurred for them and against them. مَعَمَنْ وَافَقَهُمْ وَخَالَفَهُمْ With those who agreed with them and those who opposed them. وَمَا هُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْأَوْصَافِ الرَّاقِيَةِ And what they possessed of lofty qualities. فَإِذَا مَرَّتْ عَلَيْهِ هَذِهِ الْآيَاتُ عَرَفَ بِهَا أَوْصَافَهُمْ وَازْدَادَتْ مَعْرِفَتُهُ بِهِمْ وَمَحَبَّتُهُ He said that when he passes by these verses, when he reads these verses in the Qur'an, and he comes to know the qualities of the prophets and the messengers, then the first benefit that he gets, just as is the first benefit of knowing about the names and the attributes of Allah, is that he familiarizes himself with them, and he loves them more. The more he learns about their qualities, and what they were upon of lofty characteristics, and the patience that they had with those that supported them and those who opposed them from their opponents and enemies and the likes of this. And he increases in awareness of them and who they were and love of them. وَعَرَفَ مَا هُمْ عَلَيْهِ مِنَ الْأَخْرَاقِ بِالْعَمَالِ And he becomes accustomed and acquainted with what they were upon of character and lofty feats and accomplishments. خُصُوصًا إِمَامُهُمْ وَسَيِّدُهُمْ مُحَمِّنْ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وسلم. Particularly the qualities of our Messenger Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم فَيَقْتَدِ بِأَخْلَاقِهِمْ So this causes him to not just love them and mention them but to take their example. To take their example. These are separate points that a person loves the Prophets and the Messengers and that they love the righteous. And they take their example. Just loving them in and of itself is something that is tremendous. When the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, المرعو مع من أهب Anas ibn Malik, he said that when they heard the Prophet sallallahu say the statement that a man will be with those that he loves on the Day of Judgment, he said that we had not received a glad tiding of Bushra, a glad tiding after Islam that was dearer to our hearts then this statement of the Prophet ﷺ, and مَرْعُوا مَعَ مَنْ أحب. We know the hadith where the man was a drunkard, and he used to drink, and he will be openly inebriated, intoxicated, and he was lashed for being openly intoxicated a number of times, to the point that one of the Sahaba, they said to him, مَا لَكْ أَخْزَاكَ اللَّهِ what is wrong with you? May Allah disgrace you. May Allah disgrace you. And we know the Prophet said, Do not help the shaitan over your brother. For verily, this is a man who loves Allah and his messenger, despite the fact he had an addiction to alcohol, that he was a person that could not stop drinking and so on and so forth. The Prophet he said, He loves Allah and the messenger. And he, but that which benefits a person from their love of Allah and the Messenger وسلم, without a doubt is that which causes a person to be as Allah wants them to be and to take the example of the Messenger 
And mentioning them is a sign of loving them. As was stated by Sufyan ibn Uyayna and others from the Salaf that they used to say, عند ذكر الصالحين تنزير الرحمة That when the righteous are mentioned, mercy descends from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. When the righteous are mentioned, mercy descends from Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. From that mercy is what we heard, which is that they love them. It caused you to love the righteous. And the best of the righteous were the Anbiya, the Prophets in general, and the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in particular. And likewise, from that mercy is that it causes a person to aspire to do better and to emulate them in their character and their behavior. بِحَسَبِ مَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ According to what is able, what, I mean, what he is able to do, what is possible rather for him to do. Thirdly, after knowing them and loving them and following their example, the third thing, وَيَفْهَمْ أَنَ الْإِيمَانِ بِهِمْ تَمَامُهُ وَكَمَالُهُ بِمَعْرِفَتِهِ التَّامَ بِأَحْوَالِهِمْ وَمَحَبَّتِهِمْ وَاتِّبَاعِهِمْ is that thirdly the hand understands that it is required by his iman and the messengers to be complete and perfect, to know them well, and to know their circumstances and what transpired in their life, and to love them and to follow them. وَفِي الْقُرْآنِ مِنْ نُعُوتِهِ مَشَيُّ الْكَثِيرَ الَّذِي يَحْسُرُ بِهِ تَمَامُ الْكِفَايَ And in the Qur'an is a tremendous amount of information that is sufficient for us in knowing about the prophets and the messengers and that which establishes our awareness of them, love of them and following of them. وَيَسْتَفِيدُ أَيْذًا Fourthly, he said likewise he benefits when he reads about the stories of the prophets and the messengers. الْاَقْتِدَاءَ بِتَعَلِمَتِهِمْ الْعَالِيَ وَإِرْشَادَتِهِمْ وَإِرْشَادَاتِهِمْ لِلْخَلْقِ وَحُسْنِ خِطَابِهِمْ وَلُطْفِ جَوَابِهِمْ وَتَمَامِ صَبْرِهِمْ Fourthly, he benefits by taking their example in da'wah. Taking their example and how they educated the people with the most lofty of teachings. And how they guided and directed the creation of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. And how they spoke to people in the most beautiful fashion. And how they answered questions of their people in the most subtle and kind ways. tamami sabrihim And the perfect and complete patience that they had in dealing with the creation. فَلَيْسَ الْقَصْدُ مِنْ قَصَصِهِمْ أَنْ تَكُونَ سَمَرًا وَإِنَّمَا الْقَصْدُ أَنْ تَكُونَ عِبَرًا He said the intention therefore of the stories of the prophets and the messengers عَلَيْهِمُ الصَّلَاةُ والسلام, is not that we view them just to be legends, something that was stories of the olden times and I mean, this is something that doesn't have a bearing on our reality, but rather it is something that we take lessons from, that we extract lessons from and we apply to our lives. The third subject matter of the Qur'an, that's with Tawheed, knowing Allah, and that which is from His rights as regards His oneness, Tabarak wa Ta'ala, and the second subject matter of knowing about the prophets and the messengers as we just heard. The third subject matter, وَمِنْ عُلُومِ الْقُرْآنِ عِلْمُ أَهْلِ السَّعَادَةِ وَالْخَيْرِ وَأَهْلِ الشَّقَاوَةِ وَالشَّرِّ He said likewise from the knowledge of the Qur'an, from the subject matters of the Qur'an, is knowing about the people of السَّعَادَةِ, the people of felicity and success and goodness. وَأَهْلِ الشَّقَاوَةِ وَالشَّرِّ And the people of misery and doom and destruction, and those people of evil. وَفِي مَعْرِفَتِهِ لَهُمْ وَلِأَوْصَافِهِمْ وَنُعُوتِهِمْ فَوَائِدِ And there are a number of benefits in knowing about each category of people. The people of success and goodness and the people of misery and evil. There are a number of benefits, he said. مِنْهَا التَّرْغِيبُ فِي الْاَقْتِدَاءِ بِالْأَخْيَارِ وَالتَّرْغِيبُ مِنْ أَحْوَالِ الْأَشْرَارِ The first is that a person is encouraged to take the example of the akhyar. وَإِنَّهُ لَا ذِكْرُنَّكَ وَلِقَوْمِكَ وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala He said indeed this is a reminder for you and for your people it is that which re- which mentions you and your people وَسَوْفَ تُسْأَلُونَ and indeed you will be asked by Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala and so the person and he knows that when he incorporates the qualities of goodness then the thana of Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala the praise of Allah in the Qur'an is something that 
may apply to him. The Quran may be talking about him. Allah is addressing him in the Quran. And when he he hopes from Allah Taala that he is from the people that Allah has praised and that Allah loves and that Allah will reward and that Allah will protect and that Allah will guide and so on and so forth. And he is afraid when he finds within himself the qualities of the people of Sharr, of the people of evil. He is from those that Allah has criticized and that Allah has blamed or that Allah may have cursed or that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala will punish or that Allah will remove safety from and the likes of these things. And that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala just as he has turned away from Allah, Allah may leave him in his condition. And so he returns back to Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. He is discouraged, he is upset with himself. And so he is, by reading their quantities, he is encouraged to be like the first group and discouraged to be like the second group. وَالْفُرْقَانِ بَيْنَ هَؤُلَى وَهَؤُلَى And he has a criterion to distinguish between one group of people and the other. لَا يَسْتَوِي أَصْحَابُ النَّارِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ هُمُ الْفَائِزُونَ The people of the fire are not equivalent to the people of the paradise. The people of paradise are those that are successful. And he, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymi rahimullah ta'ala, he wrote a tremendous book that is entitled اِقْتِضَى أَصْفِرَاتِ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ لِمُخَالَفَةِ أَصْحَابِ الْجَحِيمِ How this straight path and being upon the straight path requires for us to oppose the people of the fire, to be different from the kufar, to be different from the kufar. And the entire book is about the dangers of imitating the disbelievers in their holidays and their apparel and their clothing and their mannerisms and their creed and so on and so forth. And how these things lead to one another. And the one thing that a person compromises and leads to another thing and another thing and another thing and to the point that there may be very little distinction between the Muslim and the non-Muslim. And there's a tremendous story that is told by some of the scholars about the fall of Andalus. And they said that the king of the northern Spanish Christians sent Uyun, Jawasis, he sent spies to Qurtuba and Granata and other places because they were planning for an invasion to take the lands away from the Muslims and to restore Spain back to Christian authority. And they said that the king, when he sent his spy, that he saw a young boy sitting at the gates of the city weeping. And he said, ما يبكيك? He was dressed like a Muslim, pretending to be a Muslim, spying upon the Muslims. He said, why are you weeping? He said, because I was training with my bow and arrow and I missed one of my targets. He said, well, you have nine other arrows. You have other opportunities. He said, had they been invading, raiding the city, if they had been coming to storm our city and we had to defend ourselves, we're not, I would not have another chance. I wouldn't have had another chance. He went back and he told the king, he said, it's not time. <laughs> it's not time. Right? The young boy, at the age of Nubur, and a young boy around the age of puberty, said after a hundred years passed, the king of that time sent spies again to the lands of the Muslims in Spain. And there was a young boy sitting outside of the city, and he was weeping. He said, why are you weeping? He said, I lost my engagement ring. To my maktuba. And I have a woman, that a girl I was engaged to marry. This is an Islamic practice, this is a Christian practice, the wedding ring, the engagement ring. I lost my engagement ring. He went back, he said, it's time. And that which occurred, may Allah be he alim. Is that which only Allah wa ta'ala knows the full extent of, of terror that was reaped upon the Muslims because they had become weak in their faith. They had become weak and complacent and they had started to imitate the disbelievers and Allah tabarak wa ta'ala sallatu allahu alayhim aduwan min siwa anfusihim fa akhada ba'da ma fi aydihim as comes in the hadith of Mustarad al-Qurashi and the, the Mustarak al-Sahihain of Imam Hakim and Saburi the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam 
He said, وَمَا نَقَذَا قَوْمٌ أَحْدَ اللَّهِ وَأَحْدَ رَسُولِهِ إِلَّا صَلَّةَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ عَدُوًّا مِنْ سِبَى أَنفُسِهِمْ فَيَأْخُذُونَ بَعْضَ مَا فِي أَيْدِيهِمْ The people never violate their covenant with Allah and the Messenger وسلم. The covenant with Allah and the Messenger is Tawheed and Sunnah. People never fall, meaning it is shirk and bid'ah. إِلَّا صَلَّةَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ عَدُوًّا مِنْ سِبَى أَنفُسِهِمْ Except that Allah will unleash against them an enemy from outside. فَيَأْخُذُونَ بَعْضَ مَا فِي أَيْدِيهِمْ Who would take some of their possessions and some of their properties and people and so on and so forth. نَسَلَ اللَّهَ السَّلَامَةَ وَالْعَافِيَةَ وَالْوَاقِي خَيْرُ شَاهِدٍ وَعَظَمُ شَاهِدٍ And the current situation of the Muslim world is the greatest evidence for that. And so the people, they have the furqan. By reading the qualities of these people, the qualities of those people, they have the criteria to distinguish between the people of truth and the people of falsehood, the people of success, the people of misery, so on and so forth. وَبَيَانِ الصِّفَاتِ وَالتُرُقَ الَّتِي وَصَرَ بِهَا هَؤُلَاء إِلَى دَارَ النَّعِيمَ وَأُولَائِكَ إِلَى دَارَ الْجَحِيمِ And they are able to distinguish between the qualities and the methods and paths that led these ones to the paradise and led those ones to the fire. وَمَحَبَتُ هَؤُلَاءِ لَتِقِيَاءَ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ كَمَا أَنْ بُغْضَ أُولَائِكَ مِنَ الْإِيمَانِ And they realize that loving the righteous is from iman, just as hating the wicked is from iman. And a person hates the people of disbelief. وَهُوْ يُرِيدُ لَهُمُ الْخَيْرِ أَكْثَرْ مِمَا يُرِيدُونَ لِيَنْفُسِهِمْ وَيُحِبُّ لَهُمْ ذَلِكَ A person, he wants the good for others. And wallahi, the Muslim, he wants the good for them more than they want it for their own selves. Or he should. Or he should. But he hates the people of disbelief, the people of ishraq, for the sake of Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, as Allah has ordered him in the Qur'an, hating that he should love those that Allah, tabarak wa ta'ala, has criticized and blamed, and ordered him not to take his allies, and so on and so forth in his book. He doesn't mistreat them. As was said by Umar radiallahu anhu, he said, أَهِنُوهُمْ وَلَا تَذْلِمُوهُمْ فَوَلَّا إِنَّهُمْ قَدْ سَبُّوا اللَّهَ مَا سَبَّةً مَا سَبَّهُ إِيَّاهَ أَهَدٌ مِنَ الْبَشَرِ He said, hold them in contempt. Don't honor them, but at the same time, don't oppress them. Speaking about the Christians. Because by Allah, they have slandered and abused Allah with a calumny, with a slander. And of course, their speech can never harm Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. But they have uttered an utterance against Allah that no one else had ever said about Allah. Saying that Allah was part of eternity and the, th- the third of three, saying that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala became bones and flesh in the, womb of, in the womb of a woman to be surrounded by fecal matter and bile and so on and so forth in the womb of a woman to breastfeed on the chest of a woman to be beaten and crucified and tortured and go to hell for three days as is a belief of the old Christians, and they wouldn't dare say that today because it sounds that crazy. But the Christians always said that they believe for those three days that God was in hell fighting with the devil for the souls of the prophets and the messengers. Had anybody ever said such a horrible thing against Allah? Does that sound like the religion of the prophets and the messengers or like Greek mythology? That is not the religion of the Anbiya wa Rasul. And so they had changed and they had slandered Allah with the slander. So a person, he loves the people of Iman and he hates the people of Al-Ishraq Billahi Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Those that ascribe partners with Allah and worship and disbelieve in Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala wanting the good for them. وَكُلَّمَا كَانَ الْعَبْدُ وَعَرَفَ لِأَحْوَالِهِمْ تَمَكَّنَ مِنْ هَذِهِ الْمَقَاسِدِ He said, and therefore the more a person knows about everything that there is to know about the prophets and the messengers, the more capable he is and the more ability he has to benefit from these goals. Or rather, the more he knows about the righteous and the more he knows about the wicked and everything that there is to know about their qualities as Allah has explained in great detail in the Quran about their beliefs, about their intentions, about their ambitions, about their speech, about their behavior, about their kithib, about their lying, about any everything of their oppression and their any hip- hypocrisy and so on and so forth. Allah Ta'ala has explained in great detail 
And he has explained the qualities of the righteous that are the exact opposite of that in great detail. And the more he knows about each group of people, the more he can implement these objectives that are intended by knowing about them. And this is where we'll stop. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه